Yo, yo, it's a fairy. Hey, continuing. Well, I have a whole playlist called the Long Range Aero Performance Playlist, and I'm diving deeper into that. It is uh, continuing to be interesting what comes out of the data set, as you can see from these screenshots. This is only two tabs of three or four different subsets of data, and it's a lot of data. Today I want to discuss with you because um, it's 2025. You're not supposed to do that on your videos because then it dates them, but I don't care. Every May through July, August, there's a new set of trolls that show up with the same questions and the same BS. And basically it is just um, the industry's message over time is if you can go faster, you will gain more energy. I've had multiples of people tell me that it, if you get a two air going 280 or 290, it fixes everything. Just increase your poundage. Not everybody can do that. All these people always have 30 inch draw links and they're shooting 80 pounds. So they think they're the, you know, Spartan hero of the world. And they just don't understand what they're talking about. So I'm going to use this stuff called data and show you a very close comparison. These two arrows are 78, 78 grains apart. So one arrow is 436 grains and one arrow is 514 grains. It's not a huge jump. You're talking about adding a 25 grains to the insert and 25 grains to the to the broadhead that's 50 somewhere in there maybe spine up a step they're a little heavier add a little bit of, of uh, 125 grains to the broadhead get your arrow flight down and uh yeah the arrow slows down and i have that data too so for, we're primarily going to focus on kinetic energy here i have a momentum chart at the, and there's a small discussion about that at the end of the video so again, we're going to be comparing a 436 grain arrow and a 514 grain arrow. Very quickly, I'm wearing my Do Not Comply hat from Hunter's Blend Coffee. And I, I drink a lot of coffee. If you use the code RF or the code ABF, you'll get 10% off your purchases. And all of that money goes to the Ashby Foundation. We're actually use that money to do studies and it is summer of 25 i'm not supposed to say that you're never supposed to say that videos i don't care um our president rob nielsen is headed to australia to do the third i believe it's the third or fourth test with an 80 pound compound repeating ed's test that report will be up on the ashby bow hunting website under supplemental reports uh, I expect that'll probably be in Q4 when that one gets posted, but there are uh, two other, there are other uh, new studies with modern equipment shooting Ed's 12-factor arrow against everything else, and the results are pretty much the same. On to our discussion of a 436-grain arrow versus just a 514-grain arrow. I may do another one of these with the 700 grain one pump because I get accused of by industry, mostly the pros and industry people of always saying you have to shoot a 700 grain arrow. Whatever. I do, but that's that. Okay, so here's the kinetic energy chart for the subset of data. The uh, arrows in my, in my data, they were all shot through a lab radar. The spine is walked up. That's why the the weights are not perfect because I would go from like a 350 at very low. I was trying to maintain arrow flight. Then I'd walk to a 300, then I went to a 250 for the heavy stuff to keep it as, as clean as I could. So it's not a perfect 50 grain increase. The data would show the same thing if it was. But it's a little jumpy, but it is what it is. And you can see on the kinetic energy chart that as you add mass and slow the, slow the arrows down, the kinetic energy at launch which is basically flat, still increases. And the kinetic energy in this particular graph is at 36 yards. 
and it is increasing as well over that distance as mass goes up and velocity goes down. Onward ho, let's, let's isolate our two, look at all the papers here, it's just easier this way. Let's isolate our two arrows. So this is the speed chart. This was an Expedition Excursion 6. It was the fastest bow I had at the time. It was running a 436 grain arrow at 281 at launch. And in this, I ran it out to 60 yards because I get a lot of crap from the long distance, guys. <clears throat> speed erosion of 31 feet per second and 11% loss of speed. And then the next arrow up in this set of data is 514 grains as discussed. Launched at 260 impact at 60 yards at 238. The speed erosion was only 22 feet per second or 8% roughly speed loss. You might be shocked at that, the things are not equivalent, but it's pretty straightforward. I've had a lot of people come at me recently, three or four people said, it's all about speed, you know, kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared. Well, I'm telling you what, buddy, Right there, the light arrow slows down faster than the heavier arrow does. And velocity squares against you for downrange energy. Again, uh, back to where I started. This is a discussion for all of you people who think if you add four or five pounds of draw weight, take mass out of the projectile to go faster, um, find a way to gain any little bits, tiny bits of kinetic energy off the bow, then you're going to be better off. Uh, the charts coming up have a different story to tell. And like I said, this is shot through a lab radar. This isn't me making the stuff up. All righty then. Here's the graph, and it shows the kinetic energy at launch, which is the blue line at 36 yards, which is the red line, and at 60 yards, which is <laughs> tangerine is what I'm calling that. Mrs. Fowler would call it tangerine. You can see that at the launch, the kinetic energy of the 436 grain arrow is 76 foot pounds, and at launch, the blue line, the kinetic energy of the 514 grain arrow is 77 foot pounds. So for you guys who are splitting hairs and trying to crank your bow up four or five or seven pounds and try to get one foot pound of kinetic energy, you might want to add mass. At 36 yards, which is the red line, the kinetic energy of a 436 grain arrow is 66 foot pounds. And the kinetic energy of a 514 grain arrow is 70 foot pounds. So that's your, you know, a longish whitetail deer shot. And then at 60, this was kind of crazy. I didn't, I've never seen, I've never looked at the data this way. This is what happens when you start to dissect this stuff. We run the KE out to 60 yards, which is the tangerine orange colored line. The KE in foot pounds of the 436 rain arrow is 61 foot pounds. And the 514 grand arrow has 65. And finally, momentum. Momentum is overlooked. It's intentional by the archery industry because nobody wants to discuss the fact that high momentum is a good thing. In fact, in physics, it's known as the thing that keeps stuff moving. Trains have high momentum only going 30 miles an hour. Your uh, Prius does not have the same momentum going 30 miles an hour. It's that simple. The most telling part of this is the momentum of the 436 grain arrow is 0.54 slugs at the bow. The momentum of the 514 grain arrow at 60 yards is exactly the same number, 60 yards downrange. That one, like I said, I've never looked at this data like this, 
But um, back to kind of where I started. I've had a lot of people coming at me lately talking about velocity, talking about adding their draw weight. The only way to get um, energy is to go faster. The only way to get energy is to get a longer draw length, which is kind of weird because most people can't do that. The only way to get um, more energy is to go fast. The easiest way to do that is to take the mass out of the projectile. When you have an equation, that equation is mass times, in kinetic energy terms, mass times velocity squared. We're gonna pull the mass down, however much. We're gonna gain some velocity, okay? And it, that's why the um, KE at the bow is pretty much the same. Because when you add a lot of mass, you pull a lot of speed out and the kinetic energy kind of balances. It's like being on a teeter-totter with people with basically the same weight, right? There's one kicker. The drag equation, you can look this stuff up, and I recommend you go do that. Go look up the drag equation. Also includes velocity squared. The faster you go, the drag squares the same way. So if your understanding of kinetic energy, meaning if I could get really fast, my kinetic energy would go up, drag is the same. The drag in the atmosphere, and then the drag thereafter at impact, because that targets a lot more dense, whatever you hit on the animal. Ribs, hide, it's unpredictable how dense the impact target's gonna be on an animal because they're pretty variable and not every shot's the same, right? but it squares with velocity. So if you pull mass out, this is, the, this is the thing you gotta understand. If you pull mass out to go faster, you squared velocity, but pull the mass out of kinetic energy. So kind of goes like this and balances, but you also increase the drag because you pulled mass out, you went faster and drag squares with velocity. So that's my discussion around where mass can help you a lot. I have three or four videos coming up on this. At the end of this video, there'll be a couple of them cars popped up. You can click on one of those. I compared a 538 grain arrow, 589 grain arrow to this 436 grain arrow. It's exactly the same results, just higher energy in both cases and way down range energy. That's the big kicker here is you've got, I mean, this year Easton did a big study at 20 yards shooting out of a Hooter shooter and all this BS, the best veins and broadheads. It doesn't really prove anything because there wasn't a human shooting it. And humans <laughs> tend to add a lot of variables, not to mention, oh, it's just ridiculous. What's most accurate? What penetrates? They didn't ask that. Once again, they flew an arrow to a target. They put a lab radar out there at very close range. May have been outside, out to 40. I don't remember. And all they said was, it's going to hit the target. And then this arrow happens to probably be an eastern arrow. Imagine that um, is the most accurate. And they didn't tell us if it would penetrate or if it was a very lethal hunting platform. It is inherent in their outcome by not saying anything that the because it hit the target, it's going through the target. I just, I, it bothers me. It bothers me because it's a totally different question. Dr. Ed did not ask the question, how do we get the arrow to the target? He did say perfect arrow flight is the second rule of the uh, second factor in the 12 factors. You got to spend the time to make perfect arrow flight. Single bevel, three to one, on and on. FOC, high mass, et cetera. Structural integrity, yada, yada. Dr. Ed studied what happens when the arrow hits the target and tries to get through the target. He did not study getting the arrow to the target. 
perfect arrow flight is heavily discussed in the study. So he isn't saying you got to shoot, you're going to shoot sideways and shoot a really heavy arrow. Perfect arrow flight, sharpen your broadheads, all that good stuff. The 99% of the industry says if it gets there, it's going to work. And that's the rub. They'll tell you you want low energy, you want low downrange energy, you just want to go fast, and if it's going fast, it's going to penetrate. I will, uh, oh, you're on YouTube. Go on YouTube, watch about 30 whitetail deer kills, and you tell me that you see consistent arrow performance on me. Watch 100 of them. The, the, the penetration is all over the place. And it's unfortunately common to see more than half an arrow hanging out of a deer. And everybody said, smoked him. That guy's going elk hunting with that arrow. He just shot a 160 pound deer with an arrow and then went halfway into a deer. And he's gonna go shoot a 700 pound bull with the same projectile. Okay, well, that's that. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't want to, it is a free country. And you do whatever the hell you damn well please. Thank you very much. Ranch Ferry out.